Right, so pretty much this video shows you how to install or wall mount your soap and shampoo dispenser. A dispenser primarily eliminates the need for messy plastic bottles and helps to make even the smallest of bathrooms feel more like a luxury spa. The wall mounting of this dispenser would be beside the wash basin. This is not an electrical component, but say perchance you were trying to drill through a tile. You would need a center punch or a nail to indent the tile, but prior to drilling the tile, you would need to protect the tile with a masking tape to prevent splintering and you know to prevent the drill bit from moving off of its center when drilling through the tile and you know through the wall. And if you're trying to fit an electrical component, you should have some basic knowledge or awareness of the ingress protection codes for the zones where you're trying to install um, your electrical component, as well as some basic idea of your bathroom layout, because you, 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 you don't want to be, you know, drilling through pipes or electrical wiring, you know, you want to be actually getting them studs. So at least some basic knowledge, you know, or fundamental knowledge of what your plausible or probable um, bathroom layout um, is will suffice. When a plumbing system layout plan is been developed as shown, you know, depending on your setup, you can choose from several venting types, but each option could present problems or complications. And that's why it's important that before finalizing a plan like this, you have the venting scheme approved by a local plumbing inspector. So you can pretty much see where the true vent is located. You know, it's a vertical pipe attached to a drain line that travels through the roof with no water running through it. But bear in mind that many fixtures are not so conveniently located. You know, if it's not conveniently located, other solutions must be found, okay? Whereas the revent pipe that you see there is also called an auxiliary vent. It, it attaches to the drain line near the fixture and runs up and over to the main vent. In your bathroom, you may also find that it's been attached directly behind the fixture or to the horizontal drain line. You know, depending on your bathroom layout setup, you might have two fixtures, you know, on the opposite sides of your wall. You know, they usually tie into the stack with a sanitary cross and that's what we've got exemplified um, as shown. And you know, you know, as a venting alternative, what happens um, when the window framing in, in, you know, in your bathroom prevents the installation of a vent line? You might have an air admittance valve installed instead. So basically, when waste drains, it opens to let air in, then gravity closes it to keep sewer gases from escaping back into the bathroom. Drain waste vent pipes carry waste and water smoothly out of the house without gurgles or fume. This essentially requires an air passageway behind the water. So basically you've got vent pipes, you know, extending from the drain pipes up through the roof to provide that passage while also carrying odour out of the house. The centrepiece of a drain waste vent system is the main stack, usually a pipe three or four inches in diameter that runs straight up through the roof. The secondary stack that you see, perhaps two or three inches in diameter, serves as a branch of the system. Then branch drain pipes of smaller diameter, typically one and a half or two inches, carry water from specific fixtures to a stack. So pretty much, venting is necessary because it allows air to enter behind the flowing liquid, producing a quick glock-free flow. And so basically, the critical distance, or how far the fixture can be from the vent pipe is determined by three factors. The size of the pipe that the code, codes require, the type of fixture you want to install and the number of fixtures that are already wet vented on the same line. And that's why it's important to use a pipe and cable detector you know, to ensure that all areas are free of hidden pipes and cables and also use a stud detector to locate the position of the studs. As we've pretty much discussed what the sizes of you know certain pipes behind the wall could be. So say for instance if I were you know installing an electronic device as opposed to installing the, the dispenser, 
I would be taking the bathroom zones into consideration. Bathroom zones are areas where electrical equipment must offer a certain degree of protection against water. It refers to the amount of water likely to be present. So the lower the zone number, the higher the ingress protection rating needs to be, or you can call it the IP rating. And vice versa, the higher the IP number, the better the protection. The first IP number ranges from 0 to 6. This refers to the level of protection against solid foreign bodies such as dust. You know, pretty much, you know, protection from solid objects such as tools, insects or dust, okay? The second number or digit relates to its protection from water and moisture. Like I said previously, the higher the number, the more the protection it has. So pretty much zone 0 has a recommended IP rating of 67, zone 1 IP65, zone 2 IP44 and zone 3 um, no IP rating is required. With respect to the 17th edition or more recently the 18th edition you know of the IEE and RET British Standard 7671 wiring and regulations. And so for example if we were to fit the electrical fitting directly above the wash basin or the soap dispenser. Um, it, it will be good practice to consider the area around the wash basin within a 60 centimeter radius of any tap. You know, it will pretty much fall within zone two where the ingress protection 44 is required. And the second number of digit of ingress 44 denotes protection against water spread from all directions and limited ingress permitted, okay? So we are pretty much installing the soap dispenser in zone 2 um, because it's got two taps and we're, we are measuring a 60 centimeter radius. You know, if you were an electrical equipment, if it was just one single tap, you know, it would fall within the radius of that one single tap, you know, the 60 cm, okay? You know, and if it were outside of the 60 centimeter radius of either of them double taps, then, you know, the soap dispenser would have been, you know, installed in zone 3. So basically, I'm not really worried about ingress protection because this is a liquid soap dispenser. If it were an electrical fitting, I would be worried about, you know, ingress protection. So what should you be worried about when drilling through a bathroom wall? First, you must understand that every wall is different. Studs usually are about 16 to 24 inches apart, center to center. Anything between studs could be a pipe or a wire. Studs will run vertically the height of the wall, whereas pipes, wires, or conduit can change direction or branch off. Studs conventionally should be anywhere between one and a half inches to two inches. Anything narrower could be a pipe or a wire. So if it's less than one and a half inches, you should be wary, okay? And that's because the depth of a roughly cut stud is two inches. And this smoothened out stud is about one and a half inches. So let's think about what we're doing. If we've shown previously that, you know, vent and drain pipes could be anywhere between um, one and a half inches to two inches to three and four inches. And we've also got stud here that could be anywhere between one and a half inches and two inches. And, you know, we've also got cold or hot water pipes, you know, copper or metal pipes, as well as timber stud walls that are over five inches then it is absolutely imperative that you have stud finders or pipe and cable detectors so that you avoid you know drilling through a water pipe or a metal pipe or a conduit pipe that, that's got wiring suffice to say every wall is different and so i will recommend that if you're going to work on any wall that you properly map out the wall which means plotting several studs at multiple heights even if you're looking for only one stud because you want you would want to make sure that the stud that you do find is actually a stud okay so the franklin's you know yellow stud finder that i'd be using is pretty much a rough guide it is a density detector and will locate any dense item behind the wall not just the stud alone okay this invariably means that it could also pick up on pipes wires conduit plaster keys and in lath and plaster walls. You know, you could also pick up on um, structural features like, you know, your double and triple studs, you know, and the rare diagonal support beams. 
And, you know, I would recommend that, you know, you place two or more stripes of masking or painter's tape at different heights on your wall and mark all objects on the tape rather than on your wall. That way you don't have to scrub off, you know, pencil marks or, or pen marks from your wall. And remember, studs run straight up and down and pipes wires frequently change direction. But like I said, you know, just get a pipe, cable or stud finder detector um, to be 100% sure. Although metal or nailing plates are usually um, installed to protect pipes. And why is it important? Just imagine if a trim carpenter who, you know, installs a baseboard, shoots a finished nail right into the center of a cold water pipe um, in your bathroom on the other side of the wall. You know, say about six months time, you might come to find your living room or your bathroom flooded. And that's because the, the nail that you've driven through in about six months would start to rust away enough for the leak to start. Initially, you might not have any flooding because the nail that you had driven into the pipe, you know, was blocking um, the, the leak, okay? So I've gone to great lengths to, to try to, to, to make you take cognizance of the layout of your bathroom and, you know, the, the respective zones um, um, in accordance with the wiring regulations, okay? So I've been installing this soap dispenser. Firstly, pretty much utilizing the Franklin Pro Sensor 710 Professional Stud Finder. You know, pretty much to locate the position of timber studs. And then subsequently using the pipe and cable detector to ensure that all areas are free of hidden pipes and cables. So what am I trying to say? The stud finder alone should not be relied on exclusively to locate objects behind the scanned surface. Use other sources of information like your construction plans, visible points of entry of pipes, location of switches and outlets, you know, and the 16 inch and 24 inches stored spacing practices, which I have mapped out, you know, on the wall here with two um, yellow 3M tapes. My expectation is that if we've got a 2x4 stud in the wall, its thickness should measure about one and a half inches. You know, pretty much a two by four lumber that's roughly cut actually measures one and a half inches thick and three and a half inches wide. And when it is milled from a rough to a smooth surface, it, it loses approximately a quarter inch from all of its four sides. Suffice to say, the thickness and the width are each reduced by approximately half inch. So behind the wall, you may have wooden studs or pipes that are about one and a half inches. The stud finder detects any inconsistency without identifying the nature of that inconsistency. So the three LED red light that lights up when you move the stud finder indicates that we might have a one and a half inch um, stud there because when you measure the three LED red points, it measures up measures up to one and a half inches so you can see that we might have another stud there but there's no way of telling if it's a wooden stud or a metal pipe okay that's why we also need a pipe and cable or metal detector as the illuminated leds or light emitting diodes which which are the red lights that turn on may indicate the location of many different features including but not limited to studs, beams, water pipes, gas pipes, wires, and inconsistency in the surface material or paint. So I've pretty much run the stud finder horizontally to locate you know, possible stud locations or the depth of the stud. So I'd also run it you know, vertically you know, to see how, how far up and down the stud um, beam runs across, okay? You know, to get accurate readings, just make sure that, you know, you press this button here, the yellow button here, before you place the stud finder on the wall. And also make sure that the stud finder itself is clean and dry, as well as the paint and wallpaper, you know, before scanning for studs. So how do we know that the three illuminated LED red lights equates or equals one and a half inches. We can only know that by measuring. So I'll get the, um, the Franklin sensor, you know, up and close tight and, and measure. And you can see that it's about one and a half inches. So anywhere pretty much between three centimeter and or one and a half inches. Sometimes, you know, you can get combined studs that measure above one and a half inches. Or you might have foil backed insulation. Although foil 
backed insulation is not very common. Metal foil can cause inconsistent readings with all electronic stud finders, including this Franklin's um, sensor. Just be wary if you're getting, you know, a lot of LEDs illuminate, illuminating. It could be anything, you know, from foil to combined studs. You know, just a personal opinion. You know, I'd rather stick with the one and a half inch um, stud if all I'm using is a stud finder. But if I've got a metal detector or pipe and cable detector, you know, it will narrow down. Um, you know what what I've found the feature if it's a metal pipe, you know, or stud, a wooden stud, okay? Because pretty much this Franklin's um, sensor or stud finder does not identify what type of object it detects. And so you can see here, a lot of the LEDs are lighting up. It could be foil, you know, it could be studs that measure up to about, you know, um, five inches. You know, it could be vent pipes, it could be anything. You know, it could be electrical cables. There's no way of telling with the flat Franklin sensor. And that's what you need to get, like, you know, a pipe and cable detector. You know, irregularities in plaster thickness and variations in construction materials can make it difficult to locate studs behind lath, you know, and plaster walls. And if the plaster has mesh reinforcement, the stud finder may not be able to detect through the metal mesh, okay? As with any painting or drilling job, you are as good as your preparation. And why have we gone to great lengths, you know, to, to try to understand the, feature, the features behind the wall? And that's because we don't want to, we don't want to go brazenly or foolhardy um, drilling through the wall without, you know, sort of like having a good grasp of, you know, what's behind the wall. The last thing you, you would want um, is, a, is, is bursting a water pipe through your wall because you, you, could, um, it, you could incur um, costly repairs. So you can definitely see on the other side of the wall in the bathroom, it's definitely picking up studs, you know, when I, you know, move it in the horizontal position, it's picking up, you know, studs that are equally spaced, you know, at about 16 inches apart. And when I move, move it vertically, um, the stud in the wall runs all the way from up to down. So, you know, I've got no qualms that I've got wooden studs in the bathroom on the other and on the other side of the of the wall. Okay. So at this stage, I'm somewhat confident that on the other side of the wall, I've got, you know, um, studs. The next step would be to, to measure to see if they're equally spaced apart, you know, between 16 and 24 inches. So I will take you know, the measurements from three from two locations. So the first one, you know, I'll take the measurements that's measuring about 24 inches, as you can see. And I'll take a measurement of the second one and you'd see that, you know, they're pretty much spaced at about 16 inches apart. So I'm pretty, pretty confident that on this side of the wall, I've got studs hanging out here. As you can see, having a good grasp of where the studs were enabled um, canvases to be hung up on the wall. And as you can see, this is about 16 inches. So I've pretty much worked out where the studs are on the opposite side of the wall and also on the other side of the wall. So I can put my dispenser anywhere I want to, but I'm choosing to put it on the green side of the wall, okay, as opposed to the grey side. I generally wouldn't install um, a dispenser at the corner of the bathroom. It's not a permitted zone, it's actually a cable route. Um, as a general rule, you shouldn't install, you know, 150 mil from the top of the wall, you know, and at each side of a corner, okay? What I'm trying to say here, you know, identifying the location where you, want, where you want to install the dispenser is really important, you know, and also, also working out if, you know, the stored, um, the wooden stores align with the, with the fixture. In this case, the fixture is the dispenser, which I will like to install just beside the wash basin. There is one stored just by the wash basin, you know, but I do not have two stores that are equally spaced, you know, to accommodate, you know, the fixture holes. I would pretty much, you know, just measure about, you know, 40, 40 to 42 cm from, from, the, from the floor. Like I said previously, all walls are different. And although, as a general rule of thumb, stores are spaced, you know, 16 to 24 inches apart, sometimes you can have three or four studs within the 16 inches when doing bathrooms high traffic corners in bathrooms for showers you know and just to be sure that you're not hitting a pvc pipe use a multi and um, pipe and cable detector metal detector okay so now that i have selected the location where i want to install the soap dispenser device I will place a bracket on the wall and mark the location of the holes for the screws with a pen. And then subsequently, after the holes of the screws are marked, I will remove the bracket. 
drill the holes in the marked area on the surface with the drill. So here I've got a 6mm plug, so I'm drilling a 5.5mm hole with a 5.5mm drill bit. The next step would be to place the pins or the 6mm plugs in the drilled holes, all them three holes. So you now push fit the plugs with the aid of a hammer and make sure that they're flush against the wall. The next step would be to reinstall the bracket and connect the holes with the plugs or the pins and then subsequently secure the screws with a screwdriver. So here I'd pretty much, you know, torque the screws into the plugs with my hands, you know, sort of like, you know, using them as a sleeve before I screw them down. You can use a spirit level to, to see if it's, you know, pretty much straight, but I think it's too late at this point anyway. So I get the drill or you can use a screwdriver if you want, you know, I'll just torque tighten, you know, the screws um, into them plugs. So I'd pretty much just tuck the rest of them holes. So the next step would be to replace the cover on the bracket back into the bracket until I hear the, the sound of a click. The next step would be to take out the soap tank device and then install the fulcrum into the hole in the wall bracket cover and then subsequently immediately place the device down until I hear a click sound. And to secure the bracket perfectly, I will place the key in the hexagonal hole in the bottom part of the bracket cover and then repeat the same process for the other soap tank device and just as before install the full crumb into the hole in the wall bracket cover and then subsequently secure or tighten with the um, key in the hexagonal hole and finally the last bit would be to put the key into the round hole on the lead and rotate to the right to open the device's lead and pretty much to prevent spilling fill three quarters of the container with liquid soap close the lid and turn the key into the round hole to the left and that's about it really don't forget to subscribe like and share you know helps the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later goodbye bye now